Hello everyone, welcome back to the Northern Forge. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I was contacted by Rick Hansen uh, about doing a Forged in file, Fire style competition here on YouTube. Um, there's going to be some other YouTubers um, participating in this, but at the time of recording I don't actually have a list of who all is going to be doing it, so I'll be adding that in at the end of the video. Um, but the rules are, we're going to each make a blade, um, style is up to cho our choosing, uh, the blade needs to be between 6 and 12 inches, the overall length should be between 9 and 15 inches, we have 8 hours to complete our knives, we have to have at least one additional handle material, and we don't have to count... Uh, glue up or tempering towards that time frame. So uh, I'm thinking I'm going to do a kind of a clip point sax style chopper. It's not going to be a proper traditional sax because um, I don't think I'm going to have time for that, but it's going to be kind of sax inspired. So I'm going to go ahead and get that drawn up. I haven't started working on my design yet. But uh, we'll jump back in once I have a drawing that I can talk about a little more. All right, so I'm going with a pretty simple design, but it is going to be rather large. I, I think I'm going to try and be ambitious here. Um, I'm going for approximately a 10-inch blade and then about 5 inches of handle, which will put me right at that upper limit of 15 inches. Um, we'll see how that turns out. This is going to definitely be a difficult blade to forge in just 8 hours. Um, I've never really done any... Uh, blades that quickly before, but uh, we're going to see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and dig out my material and we will get the forge going and start the timer. So here's my starting material. This is a, almost a full coil of a truck spring, a 5160, I assume. I've never had this stuff tested to see for sure, but um, from all the research I've done, most of them are so um, that's what I'm going to be using. I think I've probably actually got more material than I need here, but better to have uh, too much and cut some off later. Uh, I did forget to mention earlier that one of the rules of this competition is no power hammers or presses, so I am going to be forging this all out by hand. Um, I don't really know what the other smiths are going to be starting with, um, but I am going to include forging from this point in my time. Um, I'm not going to start the timer until my forge is hot, but I am going to start. I haven't done anything to this except for cut it off of the spring with an angle grinder. So I'm going to be starting from this point, and once my forge is hot, we'll start that eight-hour timer, and we'll get going. Right, steel is 
going in the fire. Timer begins. While we're waiting for this to heat up, I just want to talk a little bit. This is going to be different from my normal videos. I usually try and show the entire process start to finish without cutting anything out. But with this project, I had nearly six hours worth of video. And even after trimming out all the sections where I was just waiting for steel to heat back up and things like that and speeding up the clips, I still had a three hour long video. So uh, I had to cut quite a bit out. If you guys want to see a full version of the video that includes the entire process start to finish like my normal content, please leave a comment. Let me know if enough people ask, I will take the time to put together a full version and upload that later on. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. So I am about an hour and five minutes into this, and here's what I've got. I've got a, uh, a nice billet of steel that is now forged out and ready to be shaped into a knife. Um, unfortunately, it is getting kind of late, so I am going to put this away and come back. All right, I am back. It is the next day. Um, and I'm going to jump back in on this. I uh, measured out, I've got 11 inches worth of steel here, so I think my knife is going to be a little bit smaller than I originally planned. I'm looking at taking about 3 inches of this now, going to stretch that out into my handle, which should give me about a 5 inch handle, and it's going to shrink my blade down to about 8, 8.5 eight inches, uh, which I think I'm still going to be perfectly happy with, just a little bit smaller than what I originally anticipated. So I'm going to go ahead and get the forge heated up and we'll jump right back into this.
All right, I am at two hours, eight minutes. Um, I've basically got all the forging on this done. Um, it's going to be on to grinding. Um, you just saw I removed all the forge scale. Um, use the angle grinder just because uh, forge scale is really hard. It's really hard on grinding belts. Um, so I just took the forge scale off with a hard wheel. And I'll take this over to a 2x72 to do the rest of it. Um, I'm not super concerned about getting a high finish on this. Um, I'm much more concerned about my forge lines, which I'm pretty darn happy with. Um, if I could have changed one thing, you can see right here. I didn't have quite enough material right at the back edge of that blade. Um, so it's going to step up a little bit there. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, but the rest of the blade is nice and straight. Um, you saw I did start grinding and then I actually went back into the forge. Um, I had pretty big swoop up here. That's not what I was going for with this. I wanted a completely straight cutting edge on this knife. Um, I did change the handle design a little bit. The original one curved back down more. Uh, but I think I'm happy with how that turned out. So... On to the grinding and get this all finished out on there. Get the rough edges in and then it'll be time to quench.
gates of file, boys. We are at about two hours, 40, let's see, two hours, 44 minutes. Uh, no, sorry, two hours, 49 minutes. Um, and we have a quenched blade. It's still a little warm, but I can touch it. Um, nice and hard, skates a file. I'm happy with the way it turned out. There's a couple of small issues. Um, you can see, I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but the spine is just a hair thin right here. Uh, for, oh, I probably shouldn't do that. Um, I thought it was a warp for actually like a solid minute. I was looking at it until I realized it's just a little thin on one side, so I'm okay with that. And then there's a little fat spot right here on this side of the handle. Sorry, right here. Um, but that I can grind out. Overall, very happy with it. Going to put this in my tempering oven. Going to do uh, two hours at 350. And then I will probably do that twice, I think. Um, yeah, just to make sure it's good and annealed. And then I will be able to go back to grinding. We'll get that reground up. Get that final edge on there. And be able to put on a handle. Um, I've got a few options that I'm still thinking about, so we'll decide when that time comes. Uh, but, time to go into the tempering oven, so I will come back once we've got it tempered. Alright, it's been a couple days. I've done two temper cycles, 350 degrees, two hours each. And I am ready to jump back into the grind. Um, you can see it's fairly straight. There's a little bit of warp there, but I think that's just in the edge. Um, it's not actually in the whole blade, so I should be able to just grind that out. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to jump over to the grinder, get this ground out, and then it'll be time to put a handle on.
I am at about three hours, 20 minutes. I've got rough grind is finished. Um, I'm going to go higher in grit, but I want to get the handle ready first. I've got this nice block of rosewood um, that I've had sitting around from another project for a while. Uh, this is some extra, so I'm going to make a handle out of this. And then I'm going to use... And then I'm going to use some 3 16 brass pins to hold that in place as well as the epoxy. So, go ahead and head over to a saw and we'll get some pieces cut out, I think. Yep, it should be, let's see. No, I think it's actually going to be just a hair too small to take pieces off that direction. So I'm gonna have to cut a piece this direction. Oh, sorry, let me move that where you can see it. I'll have to cut a piece off this way and then I'll split it down the length that way and that'll give me both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the saw and we'll get this cut out. using a trick that I learned from Alex Steele from years ago so that I can cut these at the same time. Put some painter's tape on one side and put some painter's tape on the other side. And then, ah, there we go. Now, I make sure that I've got them properly lined up so the grain matches. I believe it's that way. Yep. There's an old saw mark right there that, you can, that I can see. See if I can get it to focus. There it is. Now you can see it. So, it confirms I got those in the right spot. Now, take some super glue. a few dots on here. Stick those together. Now try and get them lined up together perfectly. I'm just going to hold it. If this was anything other than a temporary connection, I would probably clamp it up and leave it for a few minutes, but in this case, I think I'll be just fine to just hold it together for a few minutes. Alright, now they're stuck together, but when I'm done cutting them and ready to actually stick them on, I'll be able to just pop that apart. The tape will tear um, on the super glue if anything tears, and then I can just peel the tape off the wood. So pretty neat trick. This is actually, I think, the first time I've ever needed to use it, but um, now you know it too. I'm going to trim this uh, extra tape off here at the end. sharpen my pocket knife, I think. This is one I use at work for 
all sorts of stuff. So, there. Now I got that front edge cleaned up. That's really the only edge I'm worried about. Now I can take this knife, take the handle, and I'm going to trace around the outside edge this way. I can, and I'm actually, the handle's going to stop right here, right about the spot where my temper stopped. So I'm going to leave a little mark there, a little mark there, and I'll do a straight line across that after I've got the hand knife out of the way. There we go. Get a pencil mark all the way around. It's pretty faint. You're probably not going to be able to see it on the camera, but I can see it. So make this line across. So that's going to be the front of the handle. And I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and we're going to cut it out. Then we can drill. We'll put some pins in and we'll be able to grind it. That'll bring it all the way in. Uh, so let's go do some stock removal on the scroll saw. Fits on there pretty darn well now. Obviously, still need to bring it in just a hair longer, a hair more. But I left it a little proud on purpose so that I can get it on the knife. And then I can grind it down to the final exact shape. So, go ahead and drill some holes through. See if I can get this just right. There we go. Right there, and go ahead and get these secured. I'm going to use the tape method again, I think. That way, I can secure the knife to the handle, and then my drilled holes will be exactly in the right spot. I don't have to worry about them walking off or anything. See how easy the tape comes off now. Now should be able to take these and Maybe. <laughs> I 
There we go. Now, take this, put that on there. We'll take our brass pin, push it through. Through the knife. And then through the other handle. And then mark that. Cut this piece of brass down and then use one for each side. All right, so here's all the parts going together to make this. We're gonna push that guy into there. I just love the way that that nice bright brass con looks on this dark rosewood. All right, so it's split out just a little bit, but I'll be taking probably at least an eighth of thickness off of here anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Now that I know I can get them lined up, I'm going to knock these back out, take it apart, and we'll get some epoxy mixed up to put this all together. All right, so it's all clamped up. Got the epoxy on the handle. And we're gonna leave it here for that epoxy to all dry. All right, so glue's all dried up. It's time to uh, shape out this handle. We're looking at, sorry, shake it a little bit while I check the timer. About four and a half hours into this. So I'm gonna jump over to the grinder and get this handle shaped up.
Thank you for watching. If you want to check out the videos of the other two Smiths in this little competition that we're having, I'll have links to their channels in the description. They are Forge Your Own World and Rocking E Forge. I will also add a pinned comment later on that will have direct links to their videos. Since we're all uploading these at the same time, I can't really add those links ahead of time. The way we're choosing a winner for this competition is whoever has the most likes on their video after one week. So go ahead and leave a like on this video if you think my knife should win the competition. And go check out the other two videos so that you can see some more great forging content. I'm really happy with the way this knife turned out. The surface finish isn't perfect, but I am planning on keeping this knife. I am not intending to list it for sale. Um, if you are interested in buying it, shoot me a message. We can talk. Um, but as you can see from this tomato slice, despite the less than perfect surface finish, it is razor sharp and slices through this tomato beautifully. As always, once again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to see more content, and leave a comment with other things that you'd like to see me make.